What's good everybody? In today's video, we are going to be discussing color grading workflows and techniques for Cinema DNG files converted from ProRes RAW. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on non-color managed workflows into Rec. 709 standard dynamic range. Simply put, in this video, we're not going to be using DaVinci Resolve's automatic color management. However, in future videos, we will be discussing how to use DaVinci Resolve's automatic color management into standard dynamic range Rec. 709, and also how to use DaVinci Resolve's automatic color management into HDR. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned for when those drop. And without further ado, let's head right back to DaVinci Resolve. So we're in DaVinci Resolve, but before we get excited and import any clips into the media pool, it's important that we set ourselves up for success. That way we don't have to go back and forth and change a lot of settings. So the first thing we're going to do is go to File, Project Settings, and we are going to focus on the Camera Raw tab. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to our Raw Profile and select Cinema DNG. We're going to keep our decode quality at full res, but we're not going to decode using camera metadata. We're going to decode using project. Now we're going to unclick apply pre-tone curve. That way we're making sure that no processing is happening. We're getting the information that we want out of the image. The biggest thing that we really have to change though is our color space in gamma. ProRes RAW is an HDR file, so there's tons of information there. However, Rec. 709 is not an HDR environment. What we need to do is allow the NLE to handle that for us. So we're actually going to change this to Black Magic Design Film. Now, we're not going to be sticking with this, but what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that our image doesn't look weird and wonky because we're trying to compact so many nits into a standard dynamic range environment. Otherwise, our image could come out looking blown out. So we're going to click Save from there. And now, when we import our clip into Resolve, you see that that actually changed, that thumbnail up here changed, and now we're in Blackmagic Design Film Log. At this point, we can now import the clip into the timeline. So now that we're in our color tab, the first thing we can tell, especially looking at our waveform, is just how much information we have throughout the entire range of this image. We have super rich shadows and super rich highlights. I think even if we zoom into about 300 here, you should even be able to see some slight cloud detail on this overcast day. So an incredible amount of dynamic range captured in this uncontrolled environment. So now let's go ahead and actually start processing this. So what we're going to change is we're going to change our decode using project to now clip. And I know I just told you to put this in Blackmagic Design Film. However, we're going to change that as well. Blackmagic Design Film, what we're working with right now is the first generation of this log curve. And unfortunately, I don't feel like it really can contain the amount of dynamic range that most cameras have at this point right now. So what I would like to do in this case is instead of working with the Blackmagic Design color space, I want to work within, let's say, DCI P3 D60, so a wider color gamut to start with, and we're going to go into linear. Now let's talk about this for a second. There's two types of RAW. There is linear recorded RAW and there is log recorded RAW. The new Arri Alexa 35 actually records its RAW in log, giving more favorable dynamic range to the more middle part of the image. However, when we're working with linear log, we need to make sure that we understand that the majority of our favorable dynamic range is going to be in our shadows. That is where digital has always shined and why we can have such a hard time getting that film look when we're color grading. So we're going to work around that, but it's important to remember that too when you're recording, that it's okay to be a little bit dark on the shadows. You can probably recover that, but if you clip those highlights, 
they're gone. So now that we have that in mind, the beautiful thing that we have here by putting this in linear is that we have access to all the information of the sensor and we can convert it to any log format that we want to instead of being stuck in Blackmagic Design Film. So let's talk about our first method on how we can get into Rec. 709 and get a decent starting point for color grading. We're going to open up our effects tab and we're going to go to a color space transform. Now both methods are going to start out like this. We're just going to change it into something different and do something a little bit different. So we're going to put our inputs here. So we have DCI P3, D60 and linear. Let's go ahead and put that in there. We have P3D60, and then we're gonna change our input gamma to linear. So we're just taking our camera raw, what we selected, and putting that in our input section. From there, I wanna convert this to the Airy Alexa color space, and we're gonna use Airy Log C. Now you're looking here and you might be saying, that looks weird, that's not correct, and you're right. In older versions of DaVinci Resolve, we didn't have to worry about this, but we need to change the tone mapping method from DaVinci to none. Remember, tone mapping will clip information, so there's no way we're going to be able to get that back in the next node. Now, the reason we're using Airy Log C is because Log C is one of the log curves that's definitely capable of holding the most dynamic range, and personally, it's one of my favorite log curves that I've actually worked with when grading. So that is why we've chosen log C as our point. If you want to, you can choose anything else, but this is my preferred method. So now we're going to go ahead and add another serial node, but we're going to add one more as well. So we should have a total of three nodes now. For right now, we're going to leave node two alone, go to node three, and apply another color space transform. So now what we're going to do in node three is we're going to take our log C and bring it into Rec. 709. So our output in node one becomes our input in node two. So we're going to go Rec. 709. Nope, my bad. So we're going to go Airy Alexa. Airy log C into Rec. 709. And I'm going to do gamma 2.4 because I color grade in a dark environment, but if you color grade in a lighter environment, you can use 2.2. I'm going to use 2.4. And then instead of using DaVinci, I'm going to switch tone mapping to luminance mapping. You can choose if you want the forward OOTF. I choose to leave that on because now I feel like I have a great starting point for my image. So now you may be asking me, well, what would I do from here? We have a couple of options of what we can do, but I like to adjust my image here in the camera raw tab first before actually going through and doing any grading, right? So think of this area as setting yourself up for a good clean palette where then you can go into node two and start your grading in the log environment. And that's why we left that open. Now, this is actually about where I like this image overall, looking at the tone. This is exactly how I shot it. This is exactly how I wanted it. And I feel comfortable actually making no adjustments here personally, but let's say you want it to. Let's say you want it to bring down even more of the highlights, right? You can take that highlight slider and bring them all the way down. Or on the contrary, you can raise them up to their max. Think of these tools as the tools in Lightroom, if you've ever worked with raw images in Lightroom or even JPEGs. The other things that we have access to are our white balance controls. Now, personally, I'm loving the overall look of the blue here, the cooler tones. However, I would really like to make sure I can go in and refine his skin tones. Unfortunately, if I go in and bring out a node here, right, to start working with his skin tones, because we're pulling in so much cooler information, because the skin tones are now on the cooler side, our key isn't quite as clean. However, what I can do is I can change my white balance to the proper white balance. And then when I go and key out his skin, you can see here that we have a tighter qualification. This will allow me to work with these warm hues here. And then once I create perhaps a whole bunch of parallel nodes, because that's how I grade, I like to bring the skin tones back to neutral here add the warmth that I want, and then add the saturation to the most saturated parts of the skin, the red, the blood flow on node six. From there, what we're gonna do is we can go ahead and pull out a layer mixer, do a key of the skin itself, 
And then, and I'm just gonna do this quick and dirty, I'm now able to add in that blue color that I wanted there. Now, of course, I'm gonna spend a lot more time than this, but I just wanna show you how you can really go through and use the raw capabilities to your advantage. So after we have nodes one through three, you can go ahead, key out your skin tones, create your look and grade as normal. So now let's talk about method number two. We've reset all of the adjustments we've made here for the purposes of this illustration. And we're gonna go from Blackmagic Design Film and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use P3D60 because it's a wider gamut and I wanna make sure we're taking as much information as we can and then condensing it down. And we're gonna choose Linear. Now what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to use some LUTs. I never talk about LUTs on my channel, but what we can do here is we can use DaVinci Resolve's film looks authentically because we have so much raw information at our fingertips. We're in our linear space, so what we can do is convert that, take that camera information since that's all ProRes RAW is, and convert it authentically into another format. So let's talk about that setup real quick. We're gonna take our first note here, we're gonna add a color space transform. Let me move this over. Now again, remember, what we have here in the raw tab becomes our inputs. So we're gonna do P3D60 into Rec 709. Oop, my bad, linear. See, even I make mistakes sometimes. Linear, if I could remember the alphabet. And then we're gonna take our output color space and we're gonna change that to Rec 709 and Cineon Film Log. Now remember with this, we have access to quite a few different color spaces. We have P3 at D60, D65, D55. We also have Rec. 709. Because my monitor is calibrated to Rec. 709, I'm gonna use the Rec. 709 color space here. But if you have a P3 monitor, you could also use that as well. To be honest, it really doesn't matter because we're going to be doing a transform with whatever LUT we choose to begin with. But I just like to keep it simple for my purposes, knowing that I already have the P3 information here. Again, we're gonna change this to none, right? Tone mapping to none. And that got rid of all of our little clipping issues that we have here. We're gonna add our two nodes that we now have three. And on the third node, instead of doing a color space transform, I'm gonna use the Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 at D65 because that's the white point my monitor is calibrated for. And we're gonna drop that on node three. Now you may be saying, whoa, why does it look like this? Well, it's actually because of our white balance information here. If we actually bring that up to a more authentic level, which is probably around 5,600 Kelvin, you can see here that we have far less issues with this looking gross. Now, I think a lot of people misconstrued film as being very flat when actually film is pretty contrasty. Film loved highlights and hated shadows. Shadows would mostly fall into blacks, but it had a really good range and balance overall. The nice part is, is that we can actually change a lot of this information here. So if we want it more of a brighter film feel, we can go ahead and increase that exposure and then we can rescue our highlights with the highlights tab. And we can also go ahead and tick highlight recovery too to make sure that we're not sacrificing too much. And when highlight recovery is on, we go ahead and just bring that down so that we make sure we're not clipping anything. We can adjust our shadows too as well and add in a little bit of saturation. We have so many options overall on what we can do with this image. And the nice part about using these film LUTs is that we can also just create different looks with different color temperatures. If we wanted something cooler overall, we have that feel. And most of the times when we have those cooler film tones, we also get those, those more darker settings. And you can see here that even this feels pretty organic overall. I would probably take a little bit of that magenta out there and leave it around here. Looks good on my reference display. It might be a little bit cooler here, but depending on your display, hopefully yours is calibrated to D65 because that's actually the white point for Rec. 709. But I digress. You have a lot of ability here.
Once you have made your adjustments in the camera raw tab the same way that we did for our other method, you can then go ahead, add another node, work on your skin tones, create your look, and continue to grade as normal. ProRes RAW, simply put, is a super powerful codec. It takes that sensor information and simply puts it in a container. This allows us to convert it to other true RAW formats, such as Cinema DNG. And this is very powerful because we have full control in our color grading software over things like sharpness, denoising, highlight roll-off, shadow recovery, etc., as long as we make sure that we're gathering all that information. Unlike other forms of RAW, which do the processing and get rid of some of that information, leaving us with whatever's left to work with. If you like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned to this entire series. Be sure to give me a comment down below if you have any questions. Follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. My beautiful people, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, Remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired guys, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, I'll see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.